uh, your description to us to this server. Already did it, sir. It's on my website. Actually, put the Discord link so they could join directly. Also, put the YouTube thing in there so they could uh, watch it from there if they wanted to. And I'm streaming it live right now on Facebook, uh, Periscope, and I don't know, two or three other places. Crazy. Hey, so Mr. I Batman, um, how, how have you been losing weight? Um, well, <laughs> mainly just following on my wife's coattails um i wanted to lose the weight we had both had bariatric surgery about eight nine years ago but at that time it was experimental it was called the laparoscopic banding and uh, i lost my job at chase and we couldn't go back for the adjustments with that type of thing you had to go back every six weeks and have an adjustment to continue to lose the weight well when i lost my insurance and lost my job at chase um those fills were like 360 dollars each i couldn't afford that you know m not making any money so that caused scar tissue to build up around the port where they were putting the, the injections in. Well, that caused the, the thing to pull on my esophagus. So I actually had, you know how you kink a hose and the water won't go through? That's what my esophagus looked like. So they took that out and they gave me what's called the gastric sleeve. Well, before all this could happen, we had to lose some weight. We went to the doctor. We got looked at. They said, yes, these are problems. We're going to have to fix this. Looked at me, the, the doctor did, and says, well, in order for this to happen, you're going to need to lose about five pounds. And it's going to take you about a month to do it because you, you're carrying your weight on your liver, and we got to move the liver around, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, cool. No problem. Well, then the doctor, Dr. Nearing, loved this guy, super nice guy, Sh Schneck Medical, can't say enough nice stuff about him. Dr. Nearing looks at my wife, Robin, and says, okay, on your side of it, though, um, unfortunately, you're carrying your weight exactly on top of your liver, and you're going to need to lose about 25 pounds before you can have your surgery, and it's probably going to take you a year to do it. My wife went ballistic. I mean, she didn't say it right to his face, but she gave it that, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> And so she went home and she got rid of every sugar, every carb, everything. And we changed our entire lifestyle. In the first 30 days, she lost 26 pounds. Uh, and before she had her, schedule, uh, her sur surgery scheduled, which was two months later, uh, she had already lost 70 pounds. As a matter of fact, they told her to slow down or the insurance wasn't going to pay for the, the uh, surgery. That's how she changed her entire lifestyle. So our lifestyle has been changed dramatically. We focus mostly on protein, we fo and we do definitely focus on portion control. I uh, are you drinking coffee again? No, oh, sir, I never quit. So are you uh, doing ketogenic? No, I really don't pay much attention other than I make sure that I have to have protein first and then everything else can come second. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm glad it's working for you, man. Oh, it has been. My wife is down 150 pounds. I'm down 90. My, my wife and I, two years ago, we couldn't walk two miles. We're now bike riding up to six miles every day. Now, we didn't do it today, but uh, for the last four days in a row, we went four, five, and six. That's how, uh, about average of six miles every time. Okay, let me go ahead and do a little intro here on the Facebook page. Um, we are getting ready to do a debate between Thomas Jump, T Jump, and Is Mr. Batman. Is this the locker room or like the pre-event room? Actually, uh, is he supposed to show up, Mr. Chad? Well, yeah, here, yeah. That's what I thought, because that's what it said on his website, that he was going to be here. i got to make an the, announcement on Facebook real quick. The debate starts at 6, right? Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Oh, minutes, yeah. In 8 minutes. He still has time. Yep, he still has time. Six and a half minutes on the YouTube. Well, there he is. 
All right. And just for my for friends that are watching on uh, Facebook, again, we're going to get ready to start the debate in about five minutes. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on my Facebook page. Uh, my phone number's on there. Please feel free to text me any questions as well. Good evening, uh, Mr. T. Jump. Hey, uh, Blackout, hey. you here? Do I have a mod in here? Matt, can you ping the server? Not tonight. What? Did you just say not tonight? Did you just yeah, just give me a listen. I'll, fine, fine, I'll ping the server. Blackout just came in. All right. Hold on. Let's... Hey. Howdy. Howdy. Wait till you get more people in here. Sure. Wait till the actual eight o'clock. Well, that gives us about five minutes. Well, that means I could do a little singing, doesn't it? Hey, uh, Supreme Leader Kim. Yes. Have you started the live stream yet? We're live. Why did you start? All right. I guess we can start. Um. Anyways. I'm gonna ping the server one more time. And get people. Okay. Yeah, I'm in no hurry. T jump, you here? Let's uh, unmute T jump. Where's he at? Uh, All right. Cool. Um. So, uh, Mister uh, Batman, would you like to tell your position to T jump here? Well, certainly. Um. Um. We've got about another three minutes, but I'll go ahead and just give myself a, a give a brief introduction. Um, I am Mr. Batman. Uh, I am a Bible believing Christian. Um, I am a proclaimer of the gospel and a destroyer of false worldviews. I love science. I'm an elementary school teacher, a substitute teacher, and so I, I love to think and teach on a very elementary level. I've been doing this now, um, online debating and discussing God's Word in this way for about 25, 30 years. I don't know. I've lost count. I'm old. I don't remember. But I do know one thing, that the Word of God is perfectly true and that everything that is, is dependent upon the God of the Bible alone. As a matter of fact, that, is, that statement is so true that you cannot know anything to be true without the God of the Bible alone. Okay, and uh, T-Jump, would you like to explain your position uh, to Mr. Batman? Sure. So you cannot know anything to be true without the God of the Bible. That's pretty easy to prove false. Think, therefore, I am. There is no premise that includes God in anywhere in that statement. I can know I exist without any reference to a God. Therefore, that is false. Okay, sir. All right. So we're, we're going to do this clean. There will be no over-talking. If you over-talk, you will be muted. While the other person is done talking, there will not be any mon monologuing. Be charitable with the mic. We want a fair debate here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let Mr. Batman go first. Why, thank you, sir. I do appreciate that. Um, I want to go ahead and say, first of all, Mr. T-Jump, I kind of saw some of the last debate that you had with Mr. Dawkins. And um, I really felt bad because he does not represent the Christian community. He was talking over your head and past you. He wasn't answering your questions. Um, I think this is where I'm going to be very helpful to you, sir, because I teach things on a very elementary level. I love to ask questions. And we need to establish very specific definitions in order for us to know what we are talking about. Number one, you said that my statement was false. 
Well, what would be your definition of truth? That which corresponds to reality. Oh, I love that, sir. The correspondence theory of reality, that which corresponds to reality. So in order to know things to be true, we need reality. And reality is comprised of, not exclusively speaking, but at least we need time, space, and matter in order to know things to be true. Would you agree with that? No. I'm sorry, what, sir? No, you don't need that at all. Like You don't need to know anything about what reality is. All you need to know is that you exist could be lots of different possible ways that you could exist you could exist outside of time possible you could exist outside of space that's possible you could exist outside of matter also possible it doesn't make a difference at all i'm sorry sir i thought you said truth was that which comports with reality Bonds, yes okay reality does reality consist of time space and matter uh I, that was never a premise in any of my statements so no that isn't something you Okay, what does reality consist of? Man, I was fat back then. Will you look at that picture? You don't, you don't need to know that. Like that was not not a premise in my arguments. My argument is, is I think, therefore I am. Reality I'm sorry, sir. Consists of is not a part of the argument. Okay, you think, therefore you are. Would you agree that thinking, that process of thinking, requires chemical reactions and chemical compounds that happen inside your brain? No. Well, how do you not think then, part sir? Of the argument. So cut out what how do you think then sir what is the process of thinking oh, yeah. i don't need to that's again how i think isn't the premise in the argument the premise is i think therefore i am it's not here's how i think i'm sorry sir but unfortunately so science example, i'm sorry you're breaking up but science wants to know how things work why they work the way they do and what they are contingent I don't care. upon I didn't say anything about science oh really um, so you don't like science? I think, therefore, I, I am. I'm That's sorry, sir. Knowledge. Hello, hello. I thought we weren't going to talk over science, one another. I, the science isn't the premise in the argument. So again, the argument is, I think, therefore, I am. That's, That's Okay, it. sir. No, but does no that exist in there. reality? No reality there. I'm sorry, sir. Um, you just let me know when you're done blovi bloviating, and I'll be happy to answer your question. You're, you're cutting in and out. I can't really... Like, say something and you cut before the end. I can't really know when you're done talking or not, so I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Know. Let me reset my audio settings. Hang on just a second. Right. Okay, let's try this now. Now, sir, um, again, you said science was not a part of the argument. Well, would you agree in order to have an argument that you're using logic? You cut out after using. You said, in order to have an argument, you are using. Okay, you sir. Said I, logic I, and E is coming in clear for me, so I don't know what's. Might be something on your end. Okay, I have I'll a storm go. outside, so it could be that. Oh, yeah. I, and again, sir, what, what I'm asking, you said it's not part of the argument. Okay. Um, in, in order to, for us to have an argument, would you agree that we have to start with a premise and come to a conclusion? This would be using laws of logic, such as laws of identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. Yes. Great. Where do those laws come from, and why do they not change over time? Uh, the laws of logic are descriptive. They don't come from anywhere. They're like languages, like exactly like English. Reality exists. Reality is reality. And then we get the laws of logic to describe that fact. So, for example, if I say that is a tree, the, the statement that is a tree doesn't come from anywhere. It's made up language to describe the fact there is an existing thing there, which is a tree. Um, logic is the exact same thing. It's, we know that reality is reality, and then we create logic, the language just like English, to describe the fact that reality is reality. Um, it doesn't change because it can't change. Reality can't not be reality. Okay. Um, sir, once again, uh, are you saying that the laws of logic were created by man? Yes. Okay, you, I don't know if your connection is messed up or what, but uh, I, I know I'm only hearing bits and pieces of what you're saying. Yes, I think you yes, said the yes. the laws of logic were created by man. 
Okay, great. So wait a minute, sir. In the beginning of the cosmos, in the beginning of the universe, could the universe both have existed and not existed at the same time in the same way? Uh oh. Well, then that's the law of non contradiction. And because that means that the law of non contradiction needs the law of identity, and it's either true or it's not true, that's the law of the excluded middle, that means all of these laws of logic pre exist the physical world, which means no. they also pre exist the mind of man. Now, sir, no. once you, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not done wait, talking. Wait, wait, Please I'm don't interrupt. I did not interrupt you. This is a I'm debate, sir. To your point there. Okay, like, great. Object when I'm done talking, sir. Uh, object when I'm done talking. This is how this works. My name is not Darth Doolittle. I'm not going to do that to you. Mm -hmm. I would expect that Darth Dawkins, the dude you talked with the last time. I'm trying to show you how a real Christian brings forth the gospel, sir, because this is what I do. I'm a proclaimer of the gospel and a destroyer of false worldviews. Right. I teach so, science. So I'd like to address your point now. You okay, said go that, ahead. Um, said that the laws of logic like can something be itself and not itself at the same time no it can't that's true that it can't but that isn't because of the law of non-contradiction law of non-contradiction just describes that fact it's not the law of contradiction doesn't make it the case the law of non-contradiction describes that that is the case for example okay, sir. the fact that a tree exists isn't true because I said the word a tree exists. This, the English statement a tree exists is irrelevant to the existence of the tree. The law of non-contradiction is irrelevant to the fact that reality can't not be reality. It's just a fact of reality. We made up this thing called the law of non-contradiction to describe that fact of reality. So, since the laws of logic are descriptive only, then sir, why can you not create a one-ended stick or a square circle or maybe a married bachelor or military intelligence? These things do not exist. Why? Because they violate the laws of logic. The laws of logic are prescriptive laws. And did you know, sir, no. that I'm sorry, sir, I'm not done talking. Please. You asked a question, didn't you? Yeah, I know, sir. It's Why? a rhetorical question because I know the answers. I don't ever ask a question I don't already know the answer to. I'm trying to teach uh, you a little something here today. The point of the debate was, sir, Andrew is that you had, uh, you had questions yesterday, or whenever that debate was, yes. and, I, and I'm trying to answer those questions for you because you don't seem to understand how the physical world works. And that's why me, an elementary I, actually, teacher, actually is going to be like so to, handy like for you, can sir. I, can I address your point? Your, your point like, sure. Uh, where does laws of logic come from? That's my point. They're human. They're all made up. We know this. I'm sorry, sir, but wait a minute. All... If they're human, do wait, human I, minds I, change I, over time? I wanna, I wanna... Do human, human minds, minds change, change over time, sir? Uh, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. But I want to. I'm sorry, sir. Do you, does, yeah, have you ever wait, changed wait, your wait. mind before? Yes, I've changed. Oh, great. My mind. So guess what? So changed. guess what? The mind changes over time. Everything in the physical world suffers from something called the second law of thermodynamics. Are you aware of oh, this? No, that's that's not the case. The second law only applies to closed systems. So Is the universe everything. a closed system, sir? Uh, don't know. Oh, ooh, I, know I do know, sir, because I know the I universe is all. Actually, sir, no, I know. Because, again, oh. everything in time, space, and matter had a beginning. We know this because everything is winding down. Everything is going from a state of least entropy to maximum entropy, from a state so of I workable, like usable to, like energy to, to no workable, usable energy. Me, I'm sorry, sir. So uh, like did did you want... Three sir? minutes ago, you still brought up the laws of logic. Yes, sir, the laws of logic. But like you that. said they are, they come from the mind of man, and that cannot be. We know, We've already yes, proved I wanna, that. I want to I want to finish my point there. You interrupted me. Let me finish my point there. Okay, go ahead. We know the laws of logic are invented by man. You can just go to the Stanford Encyclopedia <laughs> of Philosophy. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done yet. So I'm sorry. This was funny. The, sorry. Okay, that's fine. But um, you can go to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, where all experts of logic, the very first line states, a, a logic consists of a formal semantics and language. It's that early a language everyone in logic knows it's a language made up by humans it's just a language because it's describing reality and that's it there's there's nothing special. everyone who invented logic knows this and we know it for several concrete reasons one is that logic has problems it's not perfect or mistakes with logic um, specifically tells the completeness theorem one and two and the lynch Kwinski skolem theorem to go to i'm sorry sir i, I thought you didn't like science I thought you didn't like science. Is, now you're appealing to scientific philosophy. methods and scientific no, theories. This, now, this I thought you didn't like science. science. 
Oh, no, this this is philosophy. Is this no, philosophy? No, Great. Way. Let's talk about philosophy so, then, so, shall so, we? So, so again, wait, 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 wait. So section six of the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy on Classical Logic is the right logic question mark goes through a, pro a list of problems in logic. No from these problems that logic is just a human language. It is a made up thing from humans. Because there's the same problems as any other made language. So we know logic is a language. It's not perfect. If it was the mind of God, well then we know the mind of God is odd like a human mind. Problems is a human language. Um there's something else you brought up about science. Uh science is is is, is a different thing. Science is the testability it's the a priori knowledge. So I, I haven't brought up science yet. I do value science. Great, sir. So since laws of logic don't change over time, and laws of logic like the law of identity is a necessity of the physical world, did you know, sir, that well, you no, cannot... I'm okay. sorry, sir. You, please be quiet. Please remain well, I mean, silent. Made, I know it's very difficult there. for people like you that, that don't understand science to be quiet when somebody that does know what they're no, talking no, no. about you, is speaking. So you please, I'm going to go ahead and lower your premise. volume and I'm going to continue, sir. Again, laws of logic are a necessity of the physical you, world. Take over the debate, Mr. Okay, if that's the way it's going to so, be, uh, sir. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to put in there. He said that the law of identity is a... <laughs> you see, I don't even have to listen to his argument anymore. I'm just going to wait for myself to be unmuted. They've muted me on their end. He is actually making a claim that laws of logic can change uh, over time. I'm not even listening to him anymore, and I can refute his argument. You see, laws of logic don't change over time. They are a necessity of the physical world. And Chad, you know what? You didn't mute him when he was speaking over me. You're a hypocrite, sir. That's why I didn't like this server before, and I'm going to le be leaving it when I'm done today. The fact of the matter is, sir, uh, again, the laws of logic are an absolute necessity of the physical world. In order for you to have chemical reactions, this is why I asked you about your mind thing, sir. You said you thought, had thoughts in your mind. In order for your mind to work, you must have something called a transmitter neuron, a receiver neuron, a synapse, and a signal from which the signal is sent across. Now, all of these have to be identifiable in the physical world, and you cannot do that without the law of identity. Now, sir, this law of identity, you even acknowledged, has, it pre-exists the physical world. So you have refuted your own argument. Now, once again, sir, I need you to justify why these laws of logic don't change over time. Matter of fact, I'm going to open it up. Any natural law whatsoever, laws of logic, laws of physics, laws of chemistry, laws of mathematics, laws of thermodynamics, all of these laws are eternal, universal and unchanging. And because they do exist in our physical world, they must have an eternal, universal, and unchanging lawgiver. Now, sir, I'm going to uh, raise your volume so hopefully I can be able to hear you this time. But I tell you what, sir, this is not going to work if it's going to be a one-sided conversation. Uh, okay, so yeah, um, all of that's false. Like, again, you're just... What is your definition of truth? Science. I've got to address all the things you said there, so... Um, okay, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and mute myself. Let's see how I do that. There we go. And I'll just talk to my Facebook audience because what is going on here is this poor person is thinking that he knows what's going on in the real world. He thinks that uh, laws of logic can change over time. Hello there, Brandon. Uh, again, we're talking about these natural laws in the physical world. These are like laws of gravity, laws of magnetism, laws of thermodynamics, and these laws are absolutely necessary for our physical world. So, if we are going to make a claim that laws can change over time, then please show me an example of that. That's science. That's what science does. Classical logic, encyclopedia philosophy. There is no necessity of a law of logic. It's just described. There are there are different laws of logic. There are different logics. Intuitionistic logic, many valued logic, 
I'm sorry, sir. How did you identify those logic without the law of identity? Uh, they have different laws. Oh, really, sir? See, here's the problem. You are utilizing these laws. And here's what you're doing. You're sucking down air. And the whole time you're sucking down air, you're saying, hey, guess what? There is no air. While the whole time you're breathing air to keep your body alive, you're putting words in the air so I can hear them. And the whole time your argument is, there is no air. I'm sorry, sir, that doesn't work. Science wants to know how things work, why they work the way they do, and what they are contingent upon. Now, sir, please, let's have a logical discussion here. I would like for you to justify why these laws that you know cannot change over time, that are necessities in the physical world, where do these laws come from? See, this is cause and effect. This is another one of those pesky laws that don't change over time. Now, one of these pesky laws that doesn't change over time, again, is cause and effect. Every effect must have an adequate cause. You, sir, are an effect. Time, space, and matter is an effect. So, sir, I need you to justify, using the law of cause and effect, what would be the adequate cause of these laws of logic. That would be one. What would be the cause of these laws of logic not changing over time? Because if the law of identity ever changed, if the law of non-contradiction ever changed, we wouldn't be here or be able to know about it. We wouldn't be able to complain about it because we would not be alive. Now, the third one would be, why are these laws going to be here again tomorrow so we can have this party one more time? So again, this is all addressed in just philosophy 101. Descriptive, they describe... Once again, here he goes. He's using descriptions. And I've already pointed out that unfortunately, if you're going to say the laws of logic are simply descriptors, they are only describing what goes on in the physical world, then here's the problem. Then you should be able to create anything your heart contends, anything your heart desires, you should be able to create it and have the laws of logic describe that. But we don't see that. I wonder why. Because they're prescriptive laws. They prescribe what happens in the real world in real time. Again, multiple logics that were not invented by me. I didn't invent any of these. These were invented by professional philosophers who actually understand logic, unlike you. Mechanistic, many valued, quantum, z logic, all of those. Actually, sir. I'm a teacher, and I understand a lot more than you think I do. So what I'm doing right now, I'm letting him go ahead and bloviate because he's just spouting things he doesn't understand, and he's just continuing to talk without actually justifying the argument that he's making. He's trying to make an argument that truth is that which comports to reality. But wait a minute, he won't tell me what reality is. Reality consists of time, space, and matter. That's minimal. You have to have at least time, space, and matter. So if you don't have time, space, and matter, oh, I think he's done. False, but they have to always be the same. Nope, he's not done. So. Oh. Okay. So once again, sir, you still have not answered any questions on why these laws exist because we observe them in the physical world. They do not change over time and we, they, they are going to have to be here tomorrow. Now, sir, again, let me ask you a question. What is information? It is information. It is a change in entropy. No, sir, we're not talking about that. You, you said that these laws were made up by man. What is information? Is information specified complex no. arrangement of symbols that performs a function or conveys a message utilizing a transmitter or receiver? And the definition of information in physics is just a measure of entropy. Okay, sir. Um, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you a little something today. Information, especially when we're talking about genetics, is specified complex arrangement of symbols. In the genetic world, this would be G, T, A, and C. Now, since we know that this specified complex arrangement of symbols performs a function, it actually makes you who you are. Your DNA causes you to be who you are. 
Now, sir, the problem with your whole mentality here is, is you have rejected reality, which can only come from the living God. And that living God is an eternal, universal, unchanging lawgiver God. Because let's look at time, space, and matter. This is why you don't want to look at time, space, and matter, because you cannot justify where it comes from. I, on the other hand, can, because I have knowledge. I have a plethora of knowledge, sir, and I'm happy to share it with you. As a matter of fact, when we look at time, space, and matter, whatever caused time, space, and matter to exist, by definition, must be timeless, spaceless, immaterial, all-powerful, all-knowing, a loving, living, logical, lawgiver God that does not change over time. Now, sir, I'm trying to help you understand some very elementary scientific positions. Now, you can continue on in your belief system, but your belief system doesn't work. Your worldview must be able to answer all the questions or all the statements or all the things that you view in the world that you view. This is why it's called a worldview. If you're going to actually have a worldview, oh, they muted me again. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue without them. If you're going to have a worldview, the worldview must be able to explain everything in the world that you view. I don't know why he doesn't get this. Information, the, the definition of information you gave is completely wrong. Like there's no definition. What is truth? Made up and ad hoc, it doesn't work. And we can prove it doesn't work mathematically, it fails because it Hmm. It's so sad when they do that. I would really like to have a conversation with this poor person, but unfortunately that's not gonna be allowed to happen. Because what he's doing now, he is just bloviating lots of big words that he has no idea what he's talking about. So when they finally unmute me, I'm going to ask him the same questions over again. Because this person is now appealing to science. And this person keeps appealing to science without actually, actually knowing anything about the scientific method. I don't know why you keep appealing to science without knowing anything about the scientific method, sir. You see, you don't seem to understand that science wants to know how things work, why they work the way they do, and what they are contingent upon. Sir, your genetics is contingent upon a lawgiver God, because without chemical reactions and chemical compounds, and these are laws of chemistry, then you cannot explain why your body works the way it does. Now, I don't know, sir, where you went to school or if you went to school. But the fact of the matter is, is that when we're talking about information and the law of identity, you said that the law of identity is man-made. Let me show you what happens when man makes up the law of identity as he goes along. I'm going to give you a sentence, and I want you to tell me the meaning behind this sentence. Are you ready? Here we go. Pizza flies easy over the West, therefore much. Harley Quinn, Batman. What did I say to you, sir? What was the message of that sentence? Yes, it was very arbitrary because you don't seem to understand that we don't get to define things. The law of identity defined things. Now, sir, here, again, sir, the law of identity defines things. You don't get to define things. You, you don't get to define things, sir. Hang on. Uh, he keeps talking over me, Chad. Why is that allowed to happen? Uh, you mute me on a heartbeat, sir. Why are you not muting him when he's talking over me, sir? What is the problem? Why are you doing this, Chad? Yeah, one at a time. One at a time, brothers. I'm about, you know, I'm about to dump out of this one because apparently there's a hypocrite in the room that will mute one participant and not the other. Now, again, if you're going to mute one, then you need to mute them all, okay? Again, the, the fact of the matter is he will not answer the question. Answer fire. Stop griefing me. I'm going to mute both of you, and we're going to get this. And thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day. Well, that was the end of that. See, here's what happens. Sometimes you can reach people and sometimes you just can't. I did my very best to try and reach out to those people in that server, but unfortunately they refuse to actually talk about reality. This person wants to say, guess what? There's no such thing as reality. There's no such thing as laws of logic. There's no such thing as uh, 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 morality. That would be the next thing he would have to walk away from. So 
what we're going to end up doing is we're going to call it a day. I tried my best to reach out to these people, but I'm not going to be uh, talked to in that way or be uh, being muted when the other participant. And again, here's what happens. As a Christian, I go into an environment where I know I'm outnumbered. 50 to 1 is really good odds for me at that point. There was 90 people in that room, and I think there was probably a half a dozen Christians. When I make an argument that he can't refute, what do they do? They mute me. Why? Because they have no way of defending their position. The Bible is perfect. The Bible is inerrant. The Bible is the inspired word of the living God, and you can know it to be true. Do you know what? I want you to know something. If you're watching this particular stream right now, I want you, if you have any questions about God, about proof of uh, the, uh, the, the Bible is correct, about science, please feel free to reach out to me. My website is mrbatman.com. My phone number is 502-354-8699. And my email is jim at mrbatman.com. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have because that's what me, I, Mr. Batman, do. I preach the gospel and I destroy false worldviews. Have a nice day. Repent or perish.